Hello and welcome to the Marina Skewer podcast. It's been quite a while since I've done any kind of introduction on the podcast and as I think there are quite a few new people here I would quickly do that. Um, so my name is Marina, I am a yarn dyer and knitwear designer based in Bath um, which is a city in the southwest of England. I live right on the outskirts of the city so I can get both into the centre of town and out to the countryside really easily which is lovely. Um, and this podcast tends to be about my knitting and making. Uh, throughout the summer I've been including a bit of gardening as well. Um, there's going to be probably less of that um, during the autumn and winter as I'm going to be spending less time in the garden. Um, yeah, I usually include some of my works in progress um, and things I've recently finished and if I have any new patterns or yarns out um, I'll often share a bit of those as well as including some of my processes in my making. So today um, I've got a tiny bit of a thing from my garden which I'm very excited about. Um, and I'm going to be showing, as usual, my works in progress. I've got quite a few new ones. And later on, I'm going to be showing a bit of carding and blending fibre because I've had a lot of people requesting more of that. And it's been a while since I've done any carding or spinning. And I'm hoping to do a bit more as the weather cools down. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. So first up is not at all knitting related and it doesn't really even count as something I've made. However, it's something I have been very excited about all year. Um, well, since about May probably. Um, I've tried to grow squashes quite a few times before in my garden. I've always had good luck with courgettes or zucchini if you do American English. Um, because they're quite easy to grow. But we've been wanting to grow winter squashes for quite a while. We've often tried butternuts and they've just never really done anything. We've had roots falling off the vine and I think that's to do with pollination. This year we've been trying quite hard to get a lot more pollinators in the garden. So we've had a lot of flowers and it's been completely lovely. Um, I've spent quite a while just sitting out there watching butterflies and bees and things. And the result is... <coughs> We have six beautiful squashes, um, which is very exciting. It just is. I mean, look how big it is. It's huge. And I'm just bragging. I'm literally bragging um, because, you know, this isn't of benefit to anyone. I'm just excited that I grew this. And um, yeah, we're going to be able to eat them all winter long. Um, these ones... This variety is called Musquet de Provence, I think, and it's meant to be an orangey one, so you can see it's beginning to turn orange just there. Um, but we've got them all lined up on our windowsills because they face south, and so hopefully with the sunlight they will ripen up nicely, um, and we're going to try cooking various things with those. So, very excited, and I think that's one of the main things that has been really great from the garden this year. We've also had some good luck with beans um, and so it'll be really interesting to see what we can make space for next year. Now in terms of knitting stuff I'll do the things I finished first. Um, so first up I'm going to try and show you my socks. Um, they're on my feet so it's not going to be super easy but eh, you can just about see that. There we go hilarious like podcast gymnastics. Um, these are my Maltiemi socks um, which you will have seen if you've been watching previous episodes you will have seen them quite a few times because I take ages to make socks. Lots and lots of tiny tight stitches um, take me much longer than they should. I get more excited about big slightly heavier weight projects um, and I tend to last through those much faster than socks. But um, these are finished, they're super warm. The yarn I used is Whistle Bear Cuthbert Sock. Again, details are in previous episodes and in my Ravelry project where I always include at least some details for what I'm making. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased with them. They're cosy, I've been wearing them far too much. I've been trying to alternate them with other socks to give them a breather. Um, but yes, love them. 
and immediately after finishing those I made oops, these which are like the opposite um, so I made these in a weekend I cast them on on the Friday and was wearing them on the Sunday um, I didn't use a pattern and the yarn is hand spun that I made sometime last year um, from a fiber share package I don't know if you've ever done fiber share before but it's a really nice way of meeting new fibery people um, you can sign up for spinning fiber or knitting or weaving and I think there are a couple of other options I haven't done it for a while but I used to do it like every time a round came up and it's really fun um, so I still have lots of nice fiber share things um, so these are mostly Exmoor Blueface with some other fibres blended in there as well. It's a really chunky weight yarn, um, which is nice and toasty. And I deliberately made the feet slightly too big. And then when I was soaking them, once I'd finished them, I just manually felted the soles of the feet a bit, just by like when I'm washing them, you just rub them like that. And that causes the fibres to sort of come together and contract a bit which makes a uh, slightly denser stronger fabric um, which usually isn't what you want for your knitwear but for the soles of slipper socks that aren't the most durable um, yarn because I didn't spin this yarn with socks in mind um, but that felting just adds a little bit of strength and I will only be wearing these around the house so yeah I love them. You probably can't see, but there is a tiny bit of sparkle in there. Um, but it's very little. I'm not, I'm a bit picky about sparkle. I, I like it in certain contexts, but everyday wear, not so much. Um, and then this hat I was making in the last episode. This uses my Mendip DK yarn. The colours I've used are Beach, which is this dark, um, sort of maroony, browny colour, and then Fox is the orange. Um, and I really love this design. It's called the Wayod Hat. Um, it's one I designed back in April, but I've only just got round to having the pattern tested and released, and so far, the response has been really good and it's been nice to see the versions people are making in lots of different colours. This one is the largest size, so it's the size 3. I usually wear a size 2 of my hats, which is like a medium size. It's a sort of average adult head. Size 1 would be more of a like teen or large child and then size 3 is just an adult large. So my husband wears this one fine because um, he has a bigger head than me. Uh, but for me, it works as a nice, like, slouchy one, um, which is pleasing sometimes. Um, well, these colours, you know, is, is all very me. I mean, I'm very much about the autumnal colours. Um, so yes, the pattern for that one is available now on Ravelry. And it's a nice quick knit. Um, and I've also got a little bundle deal on the Mendip DK yarn which is used for the pattern, um, so you can get a little bit of a discount if you buy two skeins. Um, yeah, the yarn is um, lamb's wool uh, from a farm up on the Mendip Hills called Fernhill Farm. They're an eco farm, um, so they are about sort of regenerative agriculture um, and using the livestock as a land management tool. So. The sheep will graze very briefly and then be moved on to another field rather than intensively overgrazing and stripping out the goodness from the soil. Um, they graze the grass, they then, you know, recycle the nutrients in the grass um, by leaving their droppings and things on the ground. Those then get worked back into the soil, um, but they aren't left in the same place for a long time so they're, they're not completely stripping it down they're just encouraging more growth of the grass um, and that is one of the many reasons I wanted to use their wool for a yarn so this the base of this is a natural grey um, which gives a really nice heathery colour to the dyed colours 
um, so yeah that's that one and yeah I might just leave it on for the rest of the day because I really like it it's nice and cozy um, yes I'll show you what I'm working on next okay so current projects first up more socks because I'm a glutton for punishment um, I I do like knitting socks but I just have to ration them with other things I can't just sit down and make a fine gauge pair of socks without doing other things in between uh, in, in terms of knitting so I, I like to stagger them um, I actually wrote a blog post recently uh, about like different kinds of knitting projects to have on your needles like if you're not a completely monogamous litter, knitter um, I'm not I like to have roughly four projects on the needles um, I found four to be optimal for me um, and I like to have different size needles, different gauges, different types of yarn, uh, different size of projects. Um, and so I've listed like the four boxes that I like to tick in terms of things to have on the needles in one go. So if you are similar and like to have a variety of knitting projects, I'll put a link to that below because you might find it a bit fun. Um, so yes, socks. Again, very colour coordinated. I'm quite predictable and it's a bit embarrassing, but you know. Um, this pattern is Pebbles and Pathways by Mars, who is Hayley Brownberry. Uh, she is a podcaster and she's got a couple of designs out, and I think she's got another one coming soon, which I'm excited to see more of. Um, and she's just a lovely human and I really wanted to try this pattern because she is so good at socks and I wanted to give her pattern a go. So I'm doing two at a time as I always do. Um, you can see here I've got my little cable needle stuck in there. I mean it's not a real cable needle because I don't believe in them. Um, this one is, what's this one? This one's a sharpened matchstick. Um, and you know, I sometimes use cocktail sticks. I often just use sharpened sticks that I found on the ground. Um, I'm very much about like make do amend rather than buy a specific thing that doesn't actually do anything special. Um, so yes, boo to real cable needles, yes to sharpened sticks. Um, I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Pointy sticks. Uh, the yarn is, um, one that I dyed many a year ago. Um, it was one of my very early colourways when I started dyeing. Um, it's called Braeburn. Um, it's lovely. It's got, I don't know if you can see from there, it's got some little green bits, but the majority is a kind of brownie pink um, skewing towards red. And I just love it. I, it's, all, it's all the warm, toasty feelings. The, the yarn is um, a blue face Leicester and nylon sock, which isn't something I use anymore. As I said, I dyed this a long time ago. I don't have a recipe for the colour, and I discontinued this yarn base. Um, it was one of the very first yarns I stocked, and I discontinued it because I don't do superwash or nylon anymore. However, I had already used half of the skein um, in a previous project quite a while ago and I still had half a skein sitting about and as I'm on a bit of a sock binge at the moment, I thought I would use it up and I'm, I believe much more in that, in using what you have than getting rid of things to replace them with better things. Like if something breaks, obviously replace it in a good way. But if you have something that's perfectly serviceable, don't just chuck it out because it doesn't entirely align with what you want to be doing. Like I, yeah, like people who decide that they're going to have a completely ethical and sustainable wardrobe and therefore start by throwing out clothes that they already have and wear, it's not the way to do it. Um, I get a bit so boxy about sustainable fashion. It's the one thing that I'm properly passionate about and yeah tend to go a bit ranty but yes um 
So yeah, using up yarn I already have to make socks. Um, designed by someone who I thoroughly agree with in a lot of what they say because Mars is wonderful. Next thing, which one am I going to show you? I'm going to show you the hat. Hat. Um, so the yarn for this one is one of my current ones and is much more in line with the things I believe. Uh, so this is my Mendip 4 ply which is from the same wool as the Mendip DK that I used for the Wayod hat. Um, this one is naturally dyed with dandelions from my garden um, and so I'm really pleased with this sort of olivey green colour, it's quite beautiful. Um, and cable hat, again I'm doing magic loop here because I don't have um, the correct length needles for this, these are my sock needles but I'm using them for a hat. Um, again I <laughs> I'm using a tapestry needle as a cable needle because that happens to be roughly the right size. Um, yeah, and you can't see much of the pattern yet because I haven't got very far through. Um, and this pattern is from ah, Making Stories, issue two, um, which I am very excited to see because not only did I tech edit it, um, I'm the tech editor for Making Stories, um, it has this design in it which uses my yarn. Um, so I'm just going to find it. I probably should have marked this before so it's easy to find but that would require actual forethought and planning. Um, yes, here we go. So the hat is called Contorta, uh, designed by Carolyn Kern, who is lovely. And is there another photo? Yeah, so there's another little photo there. Not, I'm not going to be able to put it up too close because of focusing stuff. Um, but it has designs um, using twisted stitches that uh, kind of form trees going up the side of the hat um, and it's properly beautiful and I'm really pleased with it. The colour that's used in the magazine is Bloom on the Stormy base which um, is like by far the most popular colour. People love that sort of dirty mustardy yellow which I'm really enjoying like especially as it's the colour of a lot of the autumn leaves like if you see a ginkgo tree at this time of year it reminds me of that. Um, so yes, I'm very excited for this to come out. It's going to be releasing on the 29th of October, which is next week. Um, I believe there will be various knit-alongs and things running for that. Um, I've got to contribute a copy because my yarn's in it and I tech edited it. Um, and Yes, so I'm super excited to be knitting this. It's very nice to see someone else designing with my yarn. Um, so I'm hoping to have this finished fairly soon so that I can wear it and show it off because it's a really pretty design. And I wanted to use some of my naturally dyed yarn because I like the fact that the dye I've used for this one um, is, you know, it's the farm is about 20 miles from where I live and the plants I used came from my garden um so it's all it's all just quite quite pleasing um yes so I do have a couple more skeins of this colour in the online shop um and there are other similar ones as well um and I'm going to be doing a shop update of the naturally dyed colours quite soon um and if you do want to know when those come out, um, you can follow me on Instagram or sign up to my newsletter. Uh, newsletter is probably the best way to be guaranteed you'll know when stuff's going on because Instagram is all... who knows. Um, yes, next thing. This is one I talked about a couple of episodes ago. I don't think I had started it in the last episode because I was working on something else which I'm not showing you yet. It is finished, but you have to wait. Um, once I finished Mystery Project, 
uh, the needles became free for me to start this one, um, which is a design I'm doing for a cardigan. Um, I warn you, this is probably going to be nightmarish to show because I've got a lot of different yarn attached to it. Oh, good lord. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Um, despite this, if you sit, like, this is definitely not a portable project, but if you sit down and have all your yarn nicely organised, it's not nearly as bad as it looks. Um, is that all twisted? Let's see there. If I just show you half of it. So this is a cardigan I'm doing. Um, the yarn is Erica Knight British Blue 100. Um, so I'm using a 4mm needle here. Um, I haven't mentioned any of the needle sizes for any of my other projects, but they're all on Ravelry, so if you are that interested, you can check it out. Um, I tend to have quite a loose tension, so I think I use a smaller needle than most people would for the same project. Um, so I'm doing intarsia details, I'm knitting this cardigan front to front, so all the way round, um, in the flat. I'm starting bottom up, so these grey sort of wedge details are going to be at the hip. Um, I've got a few stitches on hold on each side um, for the front. Um, I could just do that all in one go, but I already have five balls of yarn attached to this and I don't want to subject myself, let alone anyone else, to that. Um, so yes, early stages with this. I imagine it's going to take me a while because it, the knitting is fairly fast, but the yarn management involved slows it down a bit. So lots of making sure the balls are all laid out neatly so they don't get too tangled while I'm working on it because yeah yarn tangling is no fun at all. Um, the only other project I have on the needles is my gink fight which I started earlier in the year. I have officially put that in hibernation until spring. I'm not going to be wearing it anytime soon because it's a summery top and so I will probably start working on that around March maybe. We'll see how it goes. That does mean I have one slot in my knitting schedule where I am at liberty to cast on something new and I haven't yet decided what it's going to be. I'm sort of resisting casting on another jumper. I want to do a colour work top down one. Maybe a Mendip DK because I think that would be super nice. It is really good for colour work and it would be nice and toasty. Um, but we'll see. I'm not sure. If you think I should cast on something specific, let me know. Or, yeah, I, I, I'd love to hear, like, if you have any suggestions or what you're casting on at the moment, because it's always nice to hear what other people are knitting. Like, I, this is something I've missed because I haven't been going to my knit group as much as I should, mostly because it's just been raining a lot and I don't like going outside when it's raining and so, yeah, I don't go to knit group as much as I should, but I have been a few times recently and it's just so nice to talk about what other people are knitting. And considering I work in the house on my own most of the time, I don't get much of that. So send me your projects, I want to see them. So I'm going to show you um, next some carding, I'm going to make some bats using two very different fibres dyed in very similar colours. So the colours were dyed at the same time, um, but the fibres are literally as opposite as they could be. And so it'll be really fun to see how they blend together. 
So here I have some fibres that I've already dyed. I dyed these quite a while ago um, and I'm going to be blending them up into bats for spinning today. Um, so this one here is mohair from a fleece I got um, from a goat farm in Wales and you can see it's got a really nice long staple length and it's beautifully shiny um, and you know these are very muted colours there's a little hint of pinky peach in there and some yellowy brown and then very occasional bits of green um, but overall the effect is sort of brown and then on this side is Kent Romney um, where you can see there's a bit more deep pink colour going on and then some more orangey bits um, and this is a shorter fibre if I show you there um, it's got a lot more bounce to it and so it isn't quite well, it's, it's sort of the opposite in terms of fibre um, so it's a shorter staple length it is very fuzzy um, and these two are going to make a really interesting combination and it's the sort of thing that you wouldn't be able to do for a uh, mill spun yarn just because the machinery wouldn't really be able to cope very well with the two significantly different fibres um, but I'm going to have a play and see how they blend together so first I'm going to blend up some of the Romney and I'm going to feed it in at the tray at the front here rather than straight onto the drum as I sometimes do.
So you can see as I'm taking this off that underneath a lot of the fibre is less well blended. So I'm going to feed this through once more uh, to blend those fibres in nicely because I would like a little bit more of a uniform texture than the Romney. So you can see there, this is the outside of the bat, which is a nice smooth finish. Um, lots of fuzziness, which almost gives a blurry effect, which is beautiful. And then this side is a lot more raggedy looking. So we're going to blend that up again and to break up those clumps. see there it's not completely uniform but we've broken up the bigger clumps and that's a really nice bouncy texture and I think that'll pair really nicely with the mohair when we've got that cast up. Right so now I'm going to card up some of the mohair and this time I'm going to card it straight onto the drum here so I can maintain the alignment of the fibres so that they'll all hopefully be going roughly in the same direction.
And again with the mohair, I'm going to, once I've taken it off, I'll blend it through another time just to get a really smooth texture. Because some of the base of the mohair locks, the bit right at the bottom, um, a little bit matted together, which isn't a problem. They're not felting or anything, but they do need a little bit of breaking the knot. So there you can see those lovely streaks, and it's a very different effect to the Romney because you've got this very strong directionality to the fiber. You can see it's pretty much all going in the same direction. So now I've got the mohair here and the Romney carded up. I'm just going to blend them. I'm going to be tearing them into pieces, just small bits, and then I'll card them up as I have done there, straight onto the drum. You can see as I tear the mohair how the longer staple length affects the way it separates. You can see those really long staples there, um, so it's got a bit more drag to it. Um, which is what makes it really good for socks and things because the fibres are so much longer so that they don't work their way out of the yarn so easily and so it makes for a stronger more hard wearing yarn. that's all blended up. You can see there's still the colour isn't completely uniform throughout. Um, so it's maintained some of the colour variation. Um, there wasn't a huge amount to start with so it's quite a subtle effect but I really enjoy that. And this is beautiful. It's it's sort of got a silky smoothness, but the Romney has given it a kind of fuzziness and lots of bounce and volume. So what I'm going to be doing here is just rolling this up because this one is now done. So 
it's almost like a cocoon. And so that is gorgeous. It's, it's got some lovely shine to it. But there are also just little bits of bouncy texture. And so I'm going to make a few more of those and they're going to be beautiful. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed it, especially if it's your first time watching. Well done for making it this far. Um, I realise they're quite long episodes. And if you are a regular watcher or you've been binging recently, thank you so much for coming back. Um, I would like a bit of feedback on like the carding segment that I've just done. Um, what do you think about those? Like, I know people enjoy the carding content, um, and watching the process involved in that, but they it takes a long time, like it's not a speedy process, and I like this to be a slow, slightly thoughtful podcast. Um, but do you find yourself skipping through bits like that, or are you happy just to sort of listen to the music and glance at it and keep it on in the background while you're doing other things? Um, I would like feedback on that. And I'd also like feedback on something else. I am considering starting a Patreon um, where you would be able to subscribe and I'm considering just starting off with a single tier so that you would just be able to help support the podcast um, and help me keep it going and set aside the time to film. Um, and I would maybe consider adding some extra bonus content for patrons um, exclusively uh, and that would be open to you know requests for tutorials or any questions you would like to ask me um, those probably wouldn't be as long as the podcast episodes um, but just like little bonus snippets um, for subscribers so if that is something you would consider signing up to. I would love to hear from you. Um, in the meantime, I'm on coffee um, because, you know, these podcasts take a long time to put together. Um, so if you do want to donate a bit to the podcast, you're welcome to do so there. And it's always so appreciated when you do so. Um, and yeah, until next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.